Hello, I'm Dr. Philip Blum of Patient-Centered Neurology, and I hope you find this educational material useful. Today we will be discussing disease-modifying therapy for relapsing remitting type multiple sclerosis. There is now a great deal known about what works for multiple sclerosis and many discoveries yet to be made. There are now a large number of treatments for many different aspects of multiple sclerosis. Before we specifically discuss disease-modifying therapy, let's start by understanding general approaches to multiple sclerosis. All treatments for multiple sclerosis, regardless of form, can be grouped into four large categories. Symptomatic therapy is an approach to each of the problems caused by multiple sclerosis as they occur, whether or not they are part of an attack or progression of the disease. Examples would be treatments for incontinence or treatments for weakness, such as physical therapy. Effective treatment is now available for acute attacks of multiple sclerosis. This therapy is aimed at stopping an attack and shortening its entire duration. General health and well-being and specific therapy for patients with multiple sclerosis in this regard is available. We won't be discussing this further today, but the therapy is very important. The main focus today will be on disease-modifying therapy. The first recorded case of multiple sclerosis probably occurred in the 15th century. For several hundred years, almost no progress was made in the understanding or treatment of the disease. Over the last 50 years, however, there has been a significant improvement in our ability to comprehend the causes of the disease, and this in turn has led to many treatment options including several disease-modifying therapies. Betaseron became the first FDA-approved multiple sclerosis disease-modifying therapy in October of 1993. Since then, ten more disease-modifying therapies have been approved, including two in the last year alone. Several more drugs and trials look promising. After a long period of little progress, stubborn multiple sclerosis is finally giving way to modern medicine. So what exactly are disease-modifying therapies and what exactly are they supposed to do? These drugs are licensed by the FDA in general to reduce the attack rate of multiple sclerosis. In addition, there is good evidence that demonstrates that they slow the rate of progression of the underlying disease. They do not, however, improve the ongoing symptoms of multiple sclerosis, and this is one of the most frequent comments and questions that I get from patients in regards to these therapies. Choosing a disease-modifying therapy is no longer simple now that we have so many options. This is a good problem to have. There are a large number of factors that are important for choosing a disease-modifying therapy. No matter what happens in this conversation, you're going to have to discuss these issues with your doctor. However, by considering these factors before you meet with your doctor about the decision, you can spend some time thinking about them and be a much more effective partner in the choice that the two of you make together. We can easily group these factors into three categories. The first group is patient factors. These issues have to do with you as a person, your lifestyle, job, hobbies, your plans to have more children, the things that are important to you as an individual. There are factors related to the disease itself that make a significant impact on the choice of disease-modifying therapy. The stage progression, and pace of the disease all impact the choice. And of course there are factors related to the medications themselves that make a significant impact on the choice of disease modifying therapy. The tolerability and delivery of many of the medications is significantly different from one to the next. So this is the fun part. This is the part where you get to tell your neurologist who you are and what's important to you. This will make a significant impact on the choice of therapy. This is a short list of patient factors that will help get you thinking about the things that you do 
and the things that you like to do as you consider your choice of disease modifying therapies. Under some circumstances, your age and heart status or other medical conditions or medications that you're on for your multiple sclerosis or other medical conditions can make an impact on the choice of drug therapy. Well, what about the drugs themselves? I am frequently asked by patients, what's the best drug for multiple sclerosis? What's the strongest drug for multiple sclerosis? Typically, manufacturers of medications for drugs in general, and in particular for multiple sclerosis, do not go out of their way to compare their drugs in head-to-head -head trials against one another. Because of that, we do not have good data for comparing one drug for multiple sclerosis to another drug for multiple sclerosis. Having said that, looking only at drug power, Tysabri is clearly the most efficacious at stopping attacks and preventing progression. However, as with all the other drugs considered as disease-modifying therapies for multiple sclerosis, Tysabri has safety and other tolerability and side effect issues that all need to be considered as we discuss which is the right choice of DMT for you. For some patients, and certainly for their insurance companies, cost is the most important issue with regard to choosing a drug. Many of the medications used as disease-modifying therapies for multiple sclerosis have costs in the range of $60,000 per year. There are other drugs that are much less expensive and need to be considered as alternatives. And of course, there are other issues besides the safety and costs of the drugs. Tolerability and side effects aside from safety are a significant contributor to making a decision about which drug to use. And the character of the multiple sclerosis itself is a significant one in terms of choosing an appropriate disease modifying therapy. The pace of attacks, the progression of the disease, and prior treatment all contribute significantly to a selection of the best medication for the job. As an example of this, I mentioned previously that Tysabri is probably the most powerful DMT for multiple sclerosis. Nevertheless, it typically is not used first because it carries a very significant risk of a serious infection called PML. However, when MS is rapidly progressive or hasn't responded to initial therapy, Tysabri is a very appropriate and frequently used second-line therapy. When considering disease-modifying therapy options for multiple sclerosis, the most important thing to remember is the good news. There are now several options and many of these are safe, powerful, and well tolerated. In order to choose the best DMT for your multiple sclerosis, you and your physician will need to consider the three major categories of factors that shape the decision. These are patient factors, disease factors, and factors related to the drugs themselves. So think about some of these factors, write down the ones you know, discuss these with your multiple sclerosis physician, and select an option that's right for you. Keep in mind, because the multiple sclerosis community has a tendency to discuss so much with one another, that one option that is right for someone else may not be the right option for you. Choose carefully. And that's a brief overview of disease-modifying therapy for relapsing or remitting multiple sclerosis and some of the factors that go into making an appropriate treatment decision. I'm Dr. Philip Blum of Patient-Centered Neurology, and I hope you benefited from this patient education material.